Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a of plane RuneScape? Oh, who make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Johnson Wax Program with Bibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Bibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Who Knows? night I was reading an interesting article about how those famous paintings in the Louvre art galleries, like the Mona Lisa, were moved out of Paris ahead of the Germans. The thing that interested me most was how carefully those treasures were wrapped for their protection. And of course, I thought immediately about how in our own homes we wrap many things for protection. Wrap them in a coat of wax. Now, does that seem like a new idea to you? Actually, that's what you do when you protect your dining room table, your piano, windowsills, or your floors with genuine Johnson's Wax. You cover them with a protective shield of wax, a coat of wax that guards them against dirt and wear, against scratches and fingerprints. In these days when we all have to take better care of our things, isn't it fortunate that we can do that inexpensively with Johnson's Wax, which also saves work and makes floors, furniture, and woodwork gleam with mellow beauty. Early to bed and early to rise may be all right for those copy book guys, but when winter hits zero, it isn't so jolly. As witness what happens with Fibber and Molly. McGee, wake up. <laughs> McGee, wake up. <laughs> what? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. It's time to get up, dear. Uh, huh? I say it's time to get up. Come on. Now. It can't be. It's still dark. <laughs> can't see a thing. <laughs> you could if you'd open your eyes. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Come on now. I've had my shower and I'm all dressed and I got the coffee on. Now hurry. Can't I go back to sleep just long enough to finish a dream I just started? <laughs> Gee, I can't leave five brand new white sidewall tires just laying there. <laughs> Where? In my dream. <laughs> Don't worry about them. You can go to bed early tonight and pick them up then. Yeah, but suppose somebody else dreams about them and gets there before I do. I'll never get now, there. Now, now, McGee, quit stalling. Get up and wash your face and brush your teeth and come down in your bathrobe. Here's your slippers. Oh, but Molly, it's too cold out there. Well, well, maybe it is, dear. Yeah. You know, I keep forgetting you're not as young as you used to be. Yeah. You just stay in bed and build up your strength. Well, gee whiz, I don't... Yes. Mother won't bother the tired old man anymore. You just go on back to sleep, and maybe this evening you can totter downstairs for a few minutes. I've got to go and get my coffee off the stove before it boils over. Oh, so I'm a tired old man, am I? Just because I like to get 40 winks of sleep. I ain't as young as I used to was, am I? I'll show them. Oh, wow. <laughs> this floor is colder than the keel of a kayak. Where's my slippers? Oh, here. <laughs> I'll get some hot music on the radio to warm it up in here. And now, my little slug of bed, through the courtesy of Mootwell's marvelous mixture for mumps, measles, and migraines. I feel like I had all of them. We bring you your morning setting up exercises. That's an idea. That'll warm me up. Are you a man or a mouse? Man. Are your muscles flabby? Is your tummy sitting on your lap? Remember, you can't get gasoline if you have an extra spare tire. <laughs> All ready now, my little lazy bones. Put your hands on your hip. I'd like to put mine around his throat. Now, now, none of that. Okay. 
Now, on the count, up on tiptoes and hands up to shoulder height, then resume position. Ready? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Very, very good. Now, hands above heads. Raise the right leg slowly. That's it. Way up. Now, hold that leg up in the air. Now, raise the other leg. Oh, hey, Dad, right it, you can't do that. Well, then let's try something easier. <laughs> Roll over on your back. That's it. Now, make with the tootsies like riding a bicycle. Uh-huh, fine. Now, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> Now, let's all... McGee, what on earth are you doing? Riding a bicycle. Well, wake up. You're still dreaming. Huh? Didn't you hear me call you for breakfast? I'm just taking my setting up exercises. I always feel better when I exercise in the morning. And when did you ever exercise in the morning? Or any other time? Well, it's time I did. I'm going to do it every day. I'm going to go on a diet, too, and take long walks. Why, I'm getting a bay window that ten people could watch a parade from. <laughs> I noticed you were bulging a bit in the belt buckle, but... You'll have to make your old body do now till after breakfast. Right. Run in, brush your teeth while I straighten up in here. Okay, I'll be right out. Oh, dear, what a man. If I'd known what a circus life would be with him, I'd have made him marry me with a three-ring ceremony. Okay, Molly, I'm ready. Say, you can get washed up quicker than a German general. <laughs> And look, no bacon, no butter for me for breakfast, and no cream and sugar, just orange juice and black coffee. Okay, dearie. I hope it won't bother you, though, when I eat my buckwheat cakes. Not a bit. I'll just... Huh? Buckwheat cakes? Oh, buckwheat cakes ain't particularly fattening, are they? Terribly. Even if you only eat seven or eight? Now, listen. You stick to your orange juice and coffee, dearie. Anyway, you always hide behind the morning paper, so you'll never notice what I eat in that way, you see... Oh, I wonder who that is. Hey, we can't answer the door with me in my pajamas and bathrobe. Oh, we will, too. Probably just a salesman. You can tell him I got smallpox. Come in. Oh, for goodness sakes, Abigail Luffington. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Effie. You'll have to excuse McGee's informality, Abigail. He just didn't feel like dressing for breakfast. Oh, <laughs> that's quite all right, my dear. <laughs> May, that's quite a loud bathrobe, isn't it, Mr. McGee? Well, so what, Abigail? He doesn't put it on till he's awake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was referring to the pattern, my dear. <laughs> poppies, isn't it? Of course it's poppies. Mommy has a pale blue one with roses on it. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? She says it uh, is poppies, and I says, yes, Mommy. It ain't funny, it. McGee. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I was really in the groove with that one. Uh, that's not a groove. That's a rut. <laughs> uh. Were you on your way downtown, Abigail? Oh, yes, my dear, but I simply had to stop and tell you about last night. Oh. I was a hostess at the canteen, and I danced with some of the most charming soldiers. Oh. Now I know what they mean by bravery beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Did you meet some nice officers, Abigail? Oh, my dear. I danced several dances with a British lad, a member of Parliament, no less. Oh, heavenly day. How do you know he was a member of Parliament, Duffy? He told me. Huh? And he showed me the insignia right on his arm. M.P. in big white letters. <laughs> oh, yes. M.P. Yes. Oh, I really had a lovely time, my dear. Hello, oh, dear boy. <laughs> Most of them wanted to twitter jog, you know. <laughs> Jitterbug, you mean. Oh, oh, is that what it is? <laughs> well, anyway, it was great fun, really. <laughs> Although I might have had a nasty fall if it had not been for the handsome young Marine I was dancing with. He grabbed you in time, Uppy? No, no, we both fell, Miss McGee. Oh. But, but fortunately, he cushioned my fall. Oh, how <laughs> lucky, Abigail. Yes, that's exactly what I said. And he said, no, madam, it was not luck. The Marines are always the first to land.
boy, were those buckwheat cakes good. <laughs> sure you won't have another, McGee? Uh-huh. There's still a little batter left. I don't think I could, Molly. <laughs> I already had 14. <laughs> Anything else you want? Just my orange juice and black coffee. Uh, I'll probably bust, but if I'm going to start that diet, I might as well do it now. <laughs> and let the dishes go for a while, Molly, and come on in the other room. I want you to oversee my exercises. Overlook would probably be a better word. But, uh, all right, this is going to be very interesting. Now, you sit in that chair there and watch. Okay. And any time you see me getting too big in the shoulders or anywhere, you stop me. I don't want to get overdeveloped. You're very broad-shouldered in the hips right now, dear. And those 14 buckwheat cakes didn't harden your stomach up any. Oh, yes, they did. I feel like I was full of lead. <laughs> Could be. Uh, I've heard rumors to that effect. <laughs> what exercise is... Oh, oh. Come in. Oh, Mr. Wimple. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. <laughs> wimp, old onion. Pardon my pajamas and bathrobe, but I always wear something loose when I'm in training. Oh, that's all right, Mr. McGee. I always slip into some trunks myself when Sweetie Face wants to work out. Oh. oh. <laughs> Are trunks comfortable, uh, Mr. Wimple? Not always, Mrs. McGee. One Sweetie Face caught me when I was slipping into one and slammed the lid on my head. <laughs> Oh, that was tough, Wimp. Oh, it was my own fault, Mr. McGee. I'd forgotten to take the top tray out. <laughs> but what are you training for? Oh, he's just building himself up generally, Mr. Wimple. He was getting so pudgy it exhausted him to climb up a short flight of fancy. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm still in pretty good shape. I ever tell you about when I was just a kid, I used to pull an automobile with my teeth? <clears throat> my goodness, Mr. McGee. That isn't what you told me once. What did he tell you, Mr. Wimple? He told me his father used to pull his teeth with an automobile. He said they'd tie a stringiest tree. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, I was a mighty strong youngster. You should have seen me in the gymnasium. Used to skip rope by the hour. I wish you'd skipped some of those you've been smoking lately. <laughs> what did you say you were in training for, Mr. McGee? Just getting into condition, Mr. Wimple. Yeah, I kind of let myself run down, Wimp. Getting kind of short-winded. You're just modest, Mr. McGee. <laughs> You're one of the longest-winded people I know. <laughs> really, Wimp? <laughs> that ain't just hero worship. Oh, no. Uh, you know what I'm going to do for you, Mr. McGee? What? I'm going to ask Sweetie Face to drop over and help you exercise. Oh. My goodness. She'll have you build up in no time. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Wimple. I don't now, think Now, wait a should... minute, Wimp. Let's not make any snap decisions here. And you'll John. be doing both Sweetie Face and me a great favor. How, oh, Mr. Wimple? But if you don't let her come over, she'll be all broken up. And so will I, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'll tell her to come right away. Hey, Wimp, don't do that. Oh, oh, my gosh. Now I am in a jam. If that corset-covered commando ever gets her hands on me... <laughs> Oh, gee, well, what will I do, Molly? Maybe you better leave town a few days, dearie. That wouldn't do any good. She'd find me. She flies by night on a broomstick. Well, if she comes to the door, I'll tell her you're ill. Mm, you ain't kidding either. I am ill. The very thought of that gorilla in a girdle tossing me around is enough to make my... Hello, folks. How's every little... Why, what's the matter, Fibber? You sick? Well, he thought you were Sweetie Face Wimple coming in, Mr. Wilcox. Wilcox, even that cookie duster on your upper lip, you ain't Ronald Coleman, but you never look more beautiful to me than you do with that upper duster on your lip. You're a sight for the sore eyes I would have had if you'd have been Sweetie Face. <laughs> What's all this Sweetie Face business? Why are you so scared of her? Well, Mr. Wimple said he was sending her over here to start training with McGee, and he's scared to death. Oh, Mrs. Wimple isn't so bad. She isn't? No. I got along with her very nicely. You did? Sure. <laughs> I was demonstrating some Johnson self-polishing glow coat oh, to her. Oh, do you have to bring that in every week, Wilcox? Why not? That brings you in every week. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's got you. <laughs> okay, but how about Sweetie Face, Wilcox? Well, I was showing her how glow coat would bring out the color and beauty of her kitchen linoleum. Yes. And she said she didn't care so much about the beauty of it, but her husband kept scuffing it up with his feet as she dragged him around. <laughs> And I told her glow coat would protect it against scuffing because it gave a protective wax finish to well, it. Well, our linoleum has glow coat on it too, McGee, so if she drags you around, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, please, Molly. <laughs> I'm nervous enough now. Go on, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I showed her how all you had to do was pour out a little glow coat, spread it around, let it dry, and in 20 minutes or less, it dried to a grand dust and damp-proof finish. Oh, she loved it. She was so pleased, she slapped me on the back as I went through the door. Lucky me. <laughs> Why lucky you? Lucky I was facing the door, otherwise I'd have gone through the wall. 
Well, happy exercises, pal. Don't take any wooden knuckles. <laughs> Imagine that wooden knuckle. If he isn't... Look, the... McGee, huh? why don't you call Mrs. Wimple and tell her you've been suddenly called out of town? No, no. Tell her the Boy Scouts have reclassified you and you're being examined for a merit badge in zither string. <laughs> why don't you tell her anything? Oh, okay, give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Gee, I hope I can talk... Hello, operator. Give me the residence of Wallace Wimple. Oh, is that you, Mert? Uh... How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's that, Mert? Your brother. He is, eh? <laughs> that sure is the switch, ain't it, Mert? <laughs> well, I'm glad they got him straightened out. Hey, Molly, Mert's brother is a lieutenant now. Got a bar on his shoulder. Well, what's the switch? He always used to have his shoulder on a bar. <laughs> what's say, Mert? Oh, you got my number. She's ringing Wimple's phone, Molly. Oh, good. Now, and now be diplomatic, dearie. Maybe she won't be so bad. <laughs> Hello, is this Sweetie... Ba- I mean, is this Mrs. Wimple? Well, this is Mr. McGee, and I... Oh. oh, what a woman. Hang that receiver oh. up, Molly. I ain't ever talking to that dame anymore. Well, oh. heavenly days, what did she say that would knock you clear across the room? It wasn't so much what she said as the way she must have said it. Oh. Boy, if that's the effect she has over the phone, I hope I never... Oh, my gosh. Hide me, Molly. That's her. Get me oh, out of Oh, now, don't be silly, McGee. She couldn't get here in 30 seconds. Oh, she... You go see who it is while I go make you some tea. Why, you're shaking like a leaf. I'll say I am. Hey, get me some good-looking shorts for Christmas, Molly. It's getting so every little thing scares the pants off me. <laughs> Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello, sis. Now, look, I'm in no state of mind to stand here and punch the bag with you, so state your business briefly and go fly your hook. I mean, roll your kite. I mean, scram. Okay, mister. I won't bother you but just a minute, I bet you. <laughs> I bet you won't either, I bet you. Because I'm just in the mood to take you by one pigtail and one legging and fling you into a snowbank. Oh. Oh, gee, that'll be fun. Let's do it, hmm, shall we, hmm, shall we? If it's fun, I refuse. What you want, sis? Oh, I'm selling chances, mister, on a pinch board. <laughs> you mean a punch board? How much are the chances? Fifty cents. Fifty cents? Ouch. You see, that's the pinch. <laughs> Four bits of jab is a pretty stiff gimmick, sis. Isn't there any ceiling price on punch boards? What is a ceiling price, mister? What is it? A ceiling price, sis, is a price that the government don't want people to pay any more than, or merchants to charge any more than, on account of they want to stabilize prices to keep down the cost of living so as to control the post-war economic situation with a greater degree of success. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm? I said ceiling... Oh, never mind. And why bother me with your punch board? Why don't you do what I always did when I was a kid? Sell everything to your own family. Oh, yeah, I can't do that, mister. My mama's rolling bandages down at the Red Cross, and my daddy is out of town. Oh. I'm practically an orphan, I guess. Orphan, sis. Hmm? I says it's orphan. No, it isn't. Not very orphan. Only when daddy goes out of town. <laughs> Never mind. Now, take your little punch board and scram out of here before Oh, I... gee, mister. Don't you want to take a chance on a turkey? No, I don't want it. On a turkey? Well, why didn't you say so? Mm-hmm. We haven't ordered ours yet. Uh, will I know right away if I win? Sure you will, I bet you. The winning number is 100, and, and nobody's got it yet. Well, they haven't, eh? <laughs> How many punches you got left on the board? Six. Wait, now, now, let me figure that out there. Six punches of four bits of throw, three bucks... Can't buy a turkey for much less than five. Chucks, I can't lose. Okay, sis, I'll buy the rest of the board. Here's three bucks. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. And here's your prize. Well, I never expected that. Hey, what do you mean, prize? This is just a ticket to your school play. I know it. I thought this was for a turkey. Mister, if it's anything like the one we had last year, it's going to be the biggest turkey you ever saw. <laughs> Sing by the light of the silvery moon. Place, park, scene, dark, silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you, sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one, be gone. Then some dialogue. Where would you like to spoon my cue with? 
blue underneath the silvery moon. By the light of the silvery moon, by the silvery moon, I want to spoon to my honey I'll croon love tune. Honey moon, keep a shining in June, keep a shining in June. front door? No, why should I? Well, my gosh, if that sweetie-faced wimple comes over here, she's just the type to barge right in. And I say barge advisedly. If she ain't a female flat boat, I never... Oh. <laughs> McGee, just because she blasted you on the telephone is no reason she's coming over here and do it personally. I know, but anyway, I... Anyway, what if she does? You wanted some exercise. You wanted to start training, didn't you? Yeah, but not with that flying tiger. The very thought of it makes my blood stand on end. Oh, I think you're just worrying about... Oh, my gosh. There she is. I'll run upstairs and hide in the linen closet. If she comes up, I'll be whiter than the sheet anyway. She'll never... No, no, no. <laughs> Control yourself, dearie. It's only me or La Trivia. You, you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just peeked out. Now, calm down. Come in. Oh, La Trivia. Hi, La Trivia. Good day, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Nice to see you. Thank you. But uh, what's the matter with you, McGee? Does there have to be something the matter with a guy if he wants to be comfortable in a bathrobe? If he could be comfortable in that bathrobe, yes. <laughs> what an atrocious pattern. <laughs> did, uh, did I say something? Well, it's nothing, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry you don't like the bathrobe. I gave it to McGee for his birthday. Bought it out of the egg money, too. <laughs> oh, uh, I... Well, uh, what I meant when I said the pattern was atrocious was not that the pattern itself was atrocious. Mm -hmm. I meant that with such attractive material, they should have put better tailoring into it. Uh, yes, yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> uh, did I... Molly bought that material and made it herself, the trivia. <laughs> Sat up nights for weeks oh. doing it. Now, McGee, I really didn't do a very good job after all. My dear Mrs. McGee, you did a perfectly amazing job. <laughs> and those elbow-length sleeves are a very smart pattern. <laughs> very. Personally, I despise full-length sleeves on a bathrobe. Old-fashioned. I might even say corny. Yes, I will say corny. <laughs> corny. <laughs> now, what may I ask? These are full-length sleeves. <laughs> I got them rolled up. Well, maybe they are corny, dearie. I didn't realize. Oh, that. I didn't mean those sleeves, Mrs. McGee. For that bathrobe, those sleeves are perfect. What I meant was that if the material, I mean the pattern of the material, uh, that is, the tailoring couldn't help me. Uh, well, if the sleeves, good heavens, is that clock right? I must be dashing along. Good day. <laughs> A man turned so red in my life, McGee. He must have Indian blood. Yeah. If he ever found out I won this bathrobe for 60 cents at the Elks Carnival throwing balls at milk bottles, he'd tear a ligament. <laughs> One of my ligaments, probably. <laughs> and when you said I bought it out of the egg money, <laughs> Oh, sweetie face, that's her. I'll run upstairs. Tell her I changed my mind about the exercises. Tell her it's against the doctor's orders. Tell her he says I got a lead clavicle or something. Uh, tell her I McGee! <laughs> Quit leaping around. This isn't her either. Huh? It's Mr. Wimple again. Oh. Come in. 
Oh, Mr. McGee, I'm so sorry. I'm afraid I've upset all your plans. What do you mean, Wink? Sweetie Face won't be able to come and help you exercise. Oh, too bad. Oh, let me sit down. <laughs> this just kind of breaks me all up, Wimp. What happened? Oh, I no sooner got home than somebody called Sweetie Face up on the telephone, and it almost killed her. Almost <laughs> killed her? Yes. You see, she was sitting in the bathtub taking a bath when I handed the telephone into her. <laughs> no wonder I got slammed across the room. Didn't you know any better than to hand a person the telephone while they're sitting in a bathtub, wimp? Well, my goodness, Mr. McGee. I took the precaution of wetting the cord first. <laughs> oh, heavenly days, Mr. Wimple. That's the worst thing you could do. What? You might have electrocuted her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Collecting metal for salvage has made all of us realize that we should take better care of any things we have that are made of metal. Things like iron pipes should be painted to keep them from rusting. But for objects made with chromium or polished metals, there's an easier way. You can protect them with regular applications of genuine Johnson's wax. Wax your chromium towel bars and bathroom and kitchen fixtures. Also, chromium chairs or tables, if you have any. Use the same Johnson's wax with which you protect your floors, furniture, and woodwork. And use it the same way. The wax forms a protective shield, guards the chromium against the corrosive action of weather and fingerprints, also minor scratches. Especially now, when conservation is so important, protect all chromium surfaces in your home with genuine Johnson's Wax. I'm going to do, Molly? What? Starting from right now, I'm really going on a strict routine. Yes? Jump into an icy shower, do a block of setting up exercises, take a brisk walk around the block, do a little shadow boxing before lunch. After lunch, I'll play an hour of fast tennis, then I'll zip through a snappy game of handball, and after that, I'll go to the gym and work out. Well, I'll see you later, Molly. Where are you going now? Going back to bed. Good night. Good night, all. Part of Wallace Wimple heard on this program was played by Bill Thompson. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry. We invite you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>